come back later. But I may have some work. Well, well. Color me impressed, lad. I wasn't certain I'd ever see you again. Reliable and headstrong? You're turning out to be quite the prize. So, now that I've whetted your appetite with our little scheme at the market, how about handling a few deadbeats for me? They owe our organization some serious court, and they've decided not to pay. I want you to explain to them the error of their ways. Kirava, Bursi Honeyhan, and Hilda. Do this right, and I can promise you a permanent place in our organization. Honestly, the debt is secondary here. What's more important is that you get the message across that we aren't to be ignored. A word of warning, though. I don't want any of them killed. Bad for business. Of course you'll get a cut. We take care of our own. Now, if you need any details on your marks, I'll be here. Get going. Kirava's stubborn, but she's got a soft spot for family. Talk to Talon J at the Bee and Barb and see if you can get something out of him. They're well acquainted, if you catch my meaning. Helga is a devout follower of Dibella and dotes over the statue to the divine that she keeps at the bunkhouse. Use it as leverage, and she'll cave. He's as pig-headed a man as you'll ever find. The key is that ugly dwarven urn in his shop. Smash that thing to bits and he'll change his attitude. I'll be here when you're done. Welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I am the Couch Warrior, and you are watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. Huh. I suppose I can work with your face. After all, the Skadra cannot always choose the finest play. Yes, I once practiced my art in the salons and manners of Tamriel's great and good. Now the scum of Skyrim are my only clients. But no matter, the greatest artists are never recognized in their own time. So, are you here as a client? Shall I remake your face? Mm-hmm. Come back later, but I may have some work for you. Well, wel welcome back to Aranus Arcana. When last we left off, we had successfully made our way down through the Ratway into the Ragged Flagon, and we have received our first mission from Brynjolf, which is to collect some money, send some messages to some deadbeats. By performing these missions, we will kind of cement ourselves in the Thieves' Guild, so it's essential that we do these and do them well. I'm also going to do the optional bits for each one. And then hopefully, having completed having completed these tasks for Brynjolf, we will be in. And then from that point, we'll start receiving some legitimate missions to perform. And it will also free us up to really start talking to other members of the guild, to start gathering some intelligence, to really do a much better job of keeping our ear to the ground um, for Linway, who is our ultimate goal. We've also got some things to consider about whether or not we continue down this Dark Brotherhood path. I've been giving it some thought. Now that we've located the Thieves' Guild, there's no reason why we would need to continue down the Dark Brotherhood quest line in order to find the information we need on Linway. If we were to continue that quest line, it would be strictly because Fleet is curious 
and because Fleet is interested in seeing if there's anything he can do from this angle to figure out why there's a contract on him, who took out the contract on his life, and whether or not there's anything he can do to erase that contract. At this point, not knowing who took out the contract on his life and not knowing why, it seems like we have two options. One is to keep running and to continue to be attacked by Dark Brotherhood assassins, or we can play the card we have, steal the contract, and try to get in on the inside, see if we can barter our way out of this this problem we're having right now. Can I help you? I tend to think that there's only one course of action. I don't think that we can continue to adventure knowing that full well our, our plans could be messed up at any point along the way by an inopportune attack by an assassin. Uh, I, I, I'm feeling like where Fleet's concerned, he would have to deal with this issue. And the only option we have right now is to deal with it head on. So at some point, I think Fleet is going to fulfill that contract to try to attract their attention. Please, don't take the statue. It's the only thing of value I have left. Come on, give up the coin. We're sending a message. You. You have my statue. What are you going to do with it? Yeah, Brynjolf told us we could get leverage by taking Not her Lady statue. Debella. No, please, I can't lose so her. So we've done that. I get the message. Here, take your gold. I hope you choke on it. One out of three, check. She gets her statue back, we get our money, message sent. I actually find that doing these, these optional bits in each one of these tiny missions to get leverage on, on the delinquent person seems to pay off. There have been times I've, I've tried it both ways. I've tried not doing the optional bits where we, we don't try to get any leverage. And unless, it, unless you're high enough level that you have fairly, fairly good uh, speech skills, a lot of times you get stonewalled. So the leverage is almost essential, I think, in some of these. What do you want? With the rumors going around about how poorly your guild's been doing, she's become much too bold. I'm not that foolish. The last thing I want is a war with your people. That's right. This guy can be reasoned Look, with. I'm only telling you this because I care for her. Don't mistake this as acceptance for what you do. Kirava has some family at a farm just inside of Morrowind. If you mention you know about it, she might just listen to you. Just please don't harm anyone. I couldn't bear the thought. If you'll excuse me, I have other things to attend to. So let's go talk to Kirava, yeah. see if we can What's your problem? We can use this leverage. Actually, let's deal with Sapphire while we're right here. I I'm knew tired that of her. stupid kid would try and find a way to weasel out of his debt. Look, this is really simple. I lent him some gold, he promised to pay me back, and now he says he's broke. End of story. All right, all right. I guess I made enough from his shipment. No need to waste any more time threatening a stable hand. Tell Shadra he doesn't owe me anything. I hope we bump into each other again. She's quite friendly now. Got a chip on her shoulder, man. Yeah, what do you want? Yeah, and everybody does. This is about the meadery. We can talk later. Here, you want something or not? No, and I never will. Now get out of my inn. How could you possibly know about... Please, my family means too much to me. Don't hurt them. The pay up. Very well. Here, take this back to Brynjol and tell him he'll have no more trouble from me. Very nice. Two out of three. Plus we took Peace. care of Sapphire at the same time. That leaves us with the pond... Prawn, which is, I 
in here. This one, I've had problems with this one glitching before. They say that the leverage is supposed to be on this urn, but there's really nothing that I can see to do on the urn. Usually I'll go over and click on it or look at it, but it doesn't really seem to activate anything. However, it, for whatever reason, it works anyway. I think the very first time I played through this quest line, it actually gave me the option to smash it. But ever since then, I'm oh, not no. getting the option anymore. You're the one from Brynjolf's outfit, aren't you? Oh, there's no need for that. I know why you're here. Tell Brynjolf not to worry about it anymore. Oh, and uh, look, I even have the payment I owed. <laughs> here, take it. All right, that's three out of three. No hiccups, no issues. You may have noticed at the beginning, or no, it was at the end of our last one, um, after I had already kind of signed off for the episode, um, as I entered the Ragged Flag and I got that level 50 in stealth that we'd been wanting, waiting for. And so I went ahead and took the perk I needed in stealth for Assassin's Blade. We now have Assassin's Blade in our tool chest. I know that's going to come in very handy in the future. So good to have that one completed. I also invested the points in health. Um, I've reached that 200 mark in stamina for now. I'm going to invest a little bit in health, see if we can't bump that up. It is one thing that I find to be um, a little bit of a disadvantage with this character is because we are we are kind of in this thievery mode and the mage type of mode it it makes it makes both magicka and stamina of of nearly equal importance and so we end up you know kind of spreading out a lot of our a lot of our points between uh, stamina and Magicka early on. So we've reached almost level 20 and haven't invested anything in health, which means we're fairly fragile as well. Um, that's okay. I mean, I think it's okay for a character to have a weakness. And if health is our kryptonite, that's fine. It's all that Stay out of trouble, much more incentive to try trouble. to maintain our... So, job's done and you even brought Try to maintain our stealth. Best of all, you did it clean. I like that. Well done. And it would seem I owe you something in return. Here you Pay go. Up. I think you'll find these quite useful. Oh, no. Well, there's a little gold. Some poison, some health. Some Judging from how well you've handled those shopkeepers, I'd say you've done more than simply prove yourself. We need people like you in our outfit. That's the spirit. Larceny's in your blood. The telltale sign of a practice thief. I think you'll do more than just fit in around here. What's on your mind? We've run into a rough patch lately, but it's nothing to be concerned about. Tell you what, you keep making us coin, and I'll worry about everything else. Fair enough? Fair enough. Now, if there are no more questions, how about following me and I'll show you what we're all about? All right, we're going to see what's going on here. We're going to finally get uh, gain admittance to the inner workings of the Thieves' Guild now. Things are definitely going in the right direction for us. We had to get well into Chapter 2, though, before we finally got what we were looking for. Now the question is, what do we do with it? I think we continue to take all the missions we can in the Thieves' Guild. Our, our objective is to gain respect, to try to get as close to the inner circle as we can. Uh, the better we can do that, or the more we can do that, the higher the likelihood that we're going to hear about other things going on in Skyrim that might concern Linway. So we really need to 
I think, follow these missions to the letter, do the best job that we possibly can. This is the one I was talking about. Our new recruit. This better not be another waste of the guild's resources here in the altar. Before we continue, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. If you play by the rules, you walk away rich. You break the rules and you lose your share. No debates, no discussion. We do what we say, when we say. I really hate Mercer. Do I make myself clear? Good, then I think it's time we put your expertise to the test. Wait a moment. You're not talking about Golden Glow, are you? Even our little Vex couldn't get in. You claim this recruit possesses an aptitude for our line of work. If so, let him prove it. Golden Glow Estate is critically important to one of our largest clients. However, the owner has suddenly decided to take matters into his own hands and shut us out. He needs to be taught a lesson. Grignol will provide you with the details. Mercer, aren't you forgetting something? Hmm? Oh, yes. Since Grignol assures me you'll be nothing but a benefit to us, then you're in. Welcome to the Thieves Guild. Nice. We finally did it. Welcome to the family, lad. I'm expecting you to make us a lot of coin. So don't disappoint me. Simple. Do as you're told and keep your blade clean. We can't turn a profit by killing. You should talk with Delvin, Mallory, and Vex. They know their way around this place, and they'll be able to kick some extra jobs your way. Oh, and talk to Tanelia in the flagon. She'll set you up with your new armor. All right. Golden Glow Estate is a bee farm. They raise the wretched little things for honey. It's owned by some smart-mouthed wood elf named Arangoth. We need you to teach him a lesson by burning down three of the estate's hives and clearing out the safe in the main house. The catch is that you can't burn the whole place to the ground. That important client Mercer mentioned would be furious if you did. Hmm. Aye. The last thing we want to be doing is crossing our clients. All right. Maven prefers that Arangoth remains alive, but if he tries to stop you from getting the job done, kill him. The guild has a lot riding on this. Don't make me look foolish by mucking it up. You watch yourself on that island. Those mercenaries don't take prisoners. Okay, Arangoth is an optional kill. We have to debate whether or not... whether or not... it's worth the risk... ticking off Maven. Smart play, I guess, would be to do this one by the letter and come away having raided the safe, burned the hives, with Arngoth still alive. At least we, we have the blessing to take him out if that's what's necessary. But I've come to the conclusion that we will play this one straight. We will avoid killing Arngoth if we can. Um, in the last episode, I asked uh, a lot of people's... Uh, I, got, I got a lot of feedback about people's opinions on how to handle golden, golden Glow. And there was, you know, I think mixed reaction going in uh, guns blazing versus stealthing the whole thing and quietly pulling the mission off. I think the challenge this time around is going to be to do the entire thing in stealth. So you're the new recruit, huh? Well, looks like you and I are going to have to get very well acquainted. There will be other opportunities to I'm lay waste. Down here. You come by anything you don't exactly own, and I'll pay you some coin for it. Minus a little slice for the guild, of course. I can also provide a few supplies useful to our trade now and again. For a small fee. 
Sure. How about I get Dirge to knock you over your head and dump you into the cistern? Ah, there's so much dialogue Look, in this one. I've been in this business a long time, and I've seen all types. You can play it tough, or you can play it smart. Whatever. At the end of the day, you'll find that all we care about down here is how much gold you can make us. Good. Then there isn't much more to say. Just give me my Here's armor. Here's your armor. Just make sure you put it to good use. I don't actually know how much I of this armor I'm going to, to use. The Thieves Guild. Show me what you've got. See if we can offload some junk here. I've got quite a bit of junk here I can get rid of. It's good. always like to lighten my load whenever I can, particularly with this character. Part of the reason that we are going with all these bound weapons is the terrific advantage we have of not carrying lots of weight in weapons. So, how cool is that? Stay light, stay mobile. So whenever I can, I'm going to offload junk. Having access to Tenelia now is is a huge benefit as well in that um, we are going to be picking up probably a lot of stolen items and having a fence right, to offload this stuff too is going to be a huge advantage for us. So the Thieves Guild armor, Before we begin, um, I, I don't really here. care for the idea of One, broadcasting I'm the, the fact that I'm a thief, this rat hole of the guild's got. so I so may just stick with the boots me, and dead wrong. keep my fur. And two, you follow my lead and do exactly as I say. No questions, no excuses. Before we begin, I want to make two th One, I'm the best in... And two, then we understand each other. Good. You are about to become now, the second best. Now, to get your feet wet. Infiltrator. I don't want to waste a lot of time talking about anything but business. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. We're in a bad way down here. Who knows? Old Delvin thinks it's some kind of curse. I think he's crazy. If you want my opinion, I'd say it's just plain old bad luck. You can get out there and start making a name for us again. Make them start fearing us like they did long ago. And while you're at it, make a little bit of coin on the side. Not a bad deal, eh? Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. We like <laughs> making coin. Yeah, I did. That wood elf's wit. He's a lot smarter than I expected. Can you believe that Fetcher had more than tripled the guard? There must have been eight of them in there. It was like he was daring us to come and get him. Well, there's an old sewer tunnel that dumps into the lake on the northwest side of the island. That's how I slipped in there. Should still be unguarded. Okay, this is good intelligence. We know there's lots of guards posted inside and out, but there's we know we've got out there just right for the take kind of a back way in through the sewers. Even if you're one of us, you better not make trouble. Ready for some work, or are you just going to wander around all day? Man, there are a lot of people down all here I'd like to smack. Right. Don't disappoint us. Breed your fight. Let me guess. He just plucked you off the street and dropped you into the thick of things without telling you which way is up. Am I right? See, that kind of attitude comes from someone who wants to get rich and stay alive long enough to enjoy it. We're going to get along nicely. I love so, Delvin. <laughs> if you've got the nerve, I've got plenty of extra jobs to help get the guild back on its feet. Look around you. The flagon, the guild, it's all falling apart. A few decades ago, this place was as busy as the Imperial City. Now, You'd be lucky if you don't trip over a skeever instead. What Look, happened? 
I know the others think I'm a bit dark for saying stuff like this, but I'm gonna give it you straight. Something out there is piss drug matters. I don't know who or what it is, but it's beyond just you and me. We've been cursed. I'll tell you what we do. We spit in that curse's face and turn things around down here. Put things back the way they were. That's where you come in. I've got plenty of work available that could guide us down the road to recovery. All you need to do is ask, and we can both come out of this smelling like a rose. I think we'll go ahead and do that. Let's take a job from him. I had all the fishing, numbers, and bedlam jobs. The ones with a more personal touch. If breaking's a more your thing, go talk to Vex. I like the numbers jobs, and I'll tell you why. Most of the establishments in Skyrim keep their transactions recorded within business ledgers. Your job will be to change the numbers in those books so the shortfalls from our other jobs look legit. We will like doing a bit of writing. You bet. I'll do it. Just keep your eyes open and your mouth shut and you'll do fine. Let me give you the details. Okay, we took a numbers job. And this one's going to take us to Whiterun. Arcadia's Cauldron. I like taking the numbers jobs from Delvin, and I'll tell you why I like taking the Even numbers jobs. Because performing the numbers jobs, actually um, modifying the ledgers, is one of the few activities or actions that you can do in the game that won't cause you to lose invisibility, which is interesting. So, in other words, if I take a burglary job from Vex and I go into uh, the target building, I locate the item I want to steal, if I'm in invisibility mode, in other words, if I've taken a potion or I've used an invisibility power, the act of picking a lockbox or grabbing the item and putting it in my inventory will cause me to lose invisibility. The interesting thing about modifying the ledgers is that writing in a ledger does not cause you to lose your invisibility. So you can actually take an invisibility potion, if you have an extended one in particular, um, once you enter the building. You can go to where the ledger is, you can make the modification, and then you can exit without ever losing your invisibility. So it, it, it makes actually the numbers jobs um, quite a bit easier to successfully accomplish than some of the other burglary jobs. The other added advantage is because you're not stealing an item, typically you're not having to worry about picking a lockbox or something like that either. All you need to do is locate the ledger, walk up, do a little scribble, and out again. So quite often, you can take an invisibility potion, sneak behind a counter, even when the person is working at the counter, get just close enough to modify the ledger and get out uh, without ever having to worry about losing that advantage. So um, I highly recommend, if you have a choice, take the numbers jobs. I always take the numbers jobs from Delvin, and then I usually go to Vex, and I'll mix it up with either burglary or heist jobs uh, just for fun. I do love the burglary jobs. Those are a lot of fun. Um, but the numbers jobs are the ones that, that are probably the easiest to successfully complete. To what brings you to Balaman today? Hmm. Blades, helmets, pretty much anything to suit your needs. Let's see what we got here. So at this point, I'm just going to try to make sure that I'm prepped if you need for this Golden Glow work, job. Come see me again. I know the Golden Glow job is coming up. I just I don't know that I'm going to do it right away. I haven't in, I haven't completely decided yet. I want to make sure I understand my strategy and I'm fully prepared before I go in. The most obvious thing I can do to prepare myself is to make sure that. All my armor and weapons are up to snuff. In other words, maxed out. Looking for some armor? Oh, looking to protect yourself or deal some damage?
All right. This is good. So I'm going to keep my Thieves Guild armor on me. I'm far from being encumbered. I'm going to use the need boots. Any more smithing? Need something? I'll wear the boots. The finest weapons and armor. Sell these vampire boots. And then I'll just keep the other pieces of that Thieves Guild armor on me in case I need them. If I ever do get over encumbered, I can switch to the Thieves Guild armor. If you need any more um, smithing work. If I if I'm interested in getting a you know, a, a temporary uh, discount on items I'm buying or better prices on things I'm selling. I can switch to the hood. But generally speaking, I like my fur armor. I'm sticking with it for now. So I think my... my ne What's this guy doing? Is he coming at me? I'm going to get out of the way here. Something's got him on edge. I'm glad it's not us. Okay, it's broad daylight, so I'm not. I'm certainly not going to go after Golden Glow in broad daylight. I'm certainly not going to go after it either without casing the joint. So it might be interesting to kind of wander out that way a little bit and kind of have a look at Golden Glow in the daylight, uh, you know, from a distance. Make some observations before we go in after nightfall. But prior to doing that, um, I think... I can collect a little something from Shadra since we helped him out with Sapphire. So we'll stop by the stables and do that. And then we will be on our way to Golden Glow. Now we've hit the 30 minute plus mark here. So I'm going to call it for this episode. The next episode we can look forward to actually doing our, our infiltration of Golden Glow. That's going to be a fun one, because we're going to go full-on stealth. We are going to try to get in and out of that place without anybody ever knowing that we were there. Should be fun. I love missions like that. So, Where is he? Ah, there he is. Any luck with Sapphire? Yes. You're off the hook, dude. Eight. You actually talked her into it? Excellent. I don't know what to say. I didn't think anyone in Riften even cared what happened to me. Look, I was saving this, but I wanted you to have it. I thought I might need it if Sapphire came for me, but I don't need it anymore. Hey, invisibility. That's timely. Well, dear viewers, we've go. reached the end of this episode. I thank you for taking the journey with me. And until next time, may all that you do be swift, quiet, and deadly. And to all Skyrim assassins, I salute you. Silence is our battle cry. You've been watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. If you liked this video, please rate, like, and subscribe. For more information on this and other Couch Warrior broadcasts, visit me on the web at www.couchwarrior.tv.